PullerASP.net and Web API interview questions that would help you in the interview preparation process. Let's explore. Q number 1, what is ASP.net? Answer, ASP stands for Active Server Pages. Microsoft came up with a framework, ASP.net, which was the updated version of legacy ASP. The library files and the ASP engine do not require to be modified while installing the framework. This facilitated IIS, Internet Information Server, to keep both legacy ASP and ASP.NET scripts on the same system. IIS is nothing but the server provided by Microsoft that is used to provide Internet-based services to any ASP.NET or web applications. Any web page script is executed by IIS. Q number 2, what do you mean by caching in ASP.NET? Answer, suppose you are visiting Google quite often and when you open a new tab on your browser, say Chrome, this web page will be there in the most frequently used section. This means that Google.com has been cached on your machine and it will be opened in much less time compared to the other websites that were not accessed in recent times. This is an example of caching. Thus, Caching is a mechanism that keeps the frequently accessed files in the cache memory and accesses them from the cache itself rather than the actual address of the files or data. Q number 3, what are the types of caching? Answer, there are three different types of caching as shown below, page caching, data caching, fragment caching. Q number 4, what is a page life cycle? What are the events in a page life cycle? Answer, during the execution of any ASP.NET page, the page undergoes a list of events, right before its inception, initialization, till the end, rendering. The occurrence of these events in chronological order on a page is known as the page life cycle. Below is the list of all the events that occur during a page life cycle. Page life cycle Q number 5, what is view state? In which event of the page life cycle, is the view state available? Answer, view state is a state management technique that allows storing user input data on a page at the post back event of a web page. View state is available after init and before page load event of the page life cycle. Q number 6, what is the lifespan of the items in the view state? Answer, the lifespan of the items in the view state depends on the life of the current page. They exist as long as the current page exists. Q number 7, what is the parent class of all the web server control? Answer, the parent class of all web server control is system.web.ui.control. Q number 8, how do you store a value in view state and retrieve them? Answer, as we know, view state stores the value of the page and the user inputs on a page. Following is the example of how we store the value in view state and retrieve it. View state emp equals say kets are of, slash slash store the value in view state string value equals view state emp dot to string. Slash slash retrieve information q number 9, what is the base class from which web forms are inherited? Answer, page class is the base class for all the web forms. Q number 10, write a code for sending an email from ASP.NET application. Answer, Writing a code snippet is very common in both ASP.NET as well as Selenium interviews. For Selenium, we have already discussed how to send an email. Below are the explanation and the code for sending an email from the ASP.NET application. Explanation in the below program, we are creating an object for mail message. Thereafter, we are specifying the sender and recipient email addresses. Then, we are specifying the subject line as software testing. Later, we are drafting the body of the email which is then sent with the use of a simple mail transfer protocol through the local host server. Code with comments mail message mail equals new mail message, slash slash creating an obj for mail message mail dot from equals xyz at xyz dot com, slash slash specifying the sender mail id mail dot to equals abc at abc dot com, slash slash specifying the recipient mail id mail dot subject equals software testing slash slash specifying the subject mail dot b od equals hi sending an email 
slash slash drafting the body of the email smtp mail dot smtp server equals localhost slash slash sending through the localhost server smtp mail dot send mail slash slash passing the attribute mail in the smtp dot send q number eleven what is the file through which you can customize your ASP.NET application? Answer, web.config is the file through which we can customize our application in ASP.NET such as applying new themes, resizing images, or cropping images. Q number 12, what is query string in ASP.NET? Answer, query string is a string, collection of characters, that is passed on any web browser as a part of the address or URL. This is often separated by a question mark. The syntax of the query string is request.querystring, variable, index, dot c. Bound Q number 13, what are the differences between code behind and code inline? Answer, code behind is the code written in a separate class file whereas code inline is the code written inside an ASP.NET web page. Code behind has an extension .aspx.cs or .aspx.v. B whereas code inline, as it is inside ASP.NET, has an extension .aspx only. Code inline is written inside script tag along with the HTML. Code for all the web pages is compiled into a .dll file, data link library file, which is kept free from the inline code. Q number 14. What are directives in ASP.N? ET. List down all the important directives. Answer, directives are the instructions that are used to describe how .aspx pages will be processed by the framework. Different directives come with different options or attributes and easily provide class names, their descriptions, or the files names of the code behind class for any specific page. It starts with percent at and ends with percent. The syntax is, percent at directive type attributes or options percent. Important directives, at page at assembly at control at master at master type at implements at import at reference at previous page type at output cache at register queue number 15, what are SQL notifications and SQL invalidations? Answer, SQL notifications are the notifications that trigger when there is any change in the data which is copied in the cache. SQL invalidation is something, you can call it a parser, that invalidates promptly when it finds any change in the data that is in the database against the copied data in the cache. Q number 16, what are session state modes? List some of the important session state modes of ASP.NET. Answer, session state is something in which the session object stores information about any particular user logged into the system. This session information can be the user ID or password, details about the user's last login, last activity and so on. This session state comes up with different storage options. Again, each option is handled by the value in the session state mode. Important session state mode state server mode, stores session state in ASP.NET state service. Session state does not hamper by the restart of the application in a particular region. In PROC mode, a default mode in which the session state is stored in memory on the web server. SQL Server mode, session state is stored in SQL Server database. It is the same as state server in preserving the session state even though the application restarts. Custom mode, session state is stored in a custom storage provider. It, custom storage provider, can be configured by the user. Off mode, this enables the offline mode. The session state is disabled in this mode. Q number 17, what is the difference between server.transfer and response.redirect? Answer, as we know, both server.transfer and response.redirect are used to facilitate the users to navigate from one page to the other during page execution. The major difference between them is that in server.transfer, as the name suggests, the transfer is done by the server and in response.redirect, it is done by the browser. Q number 18, define web services in ASP.NET. Answer, web services are the software services that serve from one machine to another using a network. These services make use of XML and provide SSL and WSS for data transmission. Q number 19, 
What is a multilingual website? Answer, any website which supports multiple languages is called multilingual websites. The content of these websites are in different languages and can be converted into multiple languages. Some popular multilingual websites include MSN, Facebook, etc. Q number 20, which object wraps the state or data of a user? Answer, session object. Q number 21, what is a session object? Answer, session object is an object that stores information about a user's session. The common information includes name, ID, preferences, any changes in the settings, etc. Session object is initialized when a session starts and is destroyed when the session expires. Q number 22, explain the difference between authentication and authorization. Answer, authorization is the process of confirming whether you are an authorized user to access the system. This includes validating the login credentials. For example, login access to Facebook. Authentication is the process of providing access to any specific resource in a system. This includes accessing any private data, resource keys, tokens, etc. For example, access rights to view private photos on Facebook. To summarize, only an authenticated person can be authorized to use resources. Q number 23, which methods validate all the controls on a page? Answer page.validate, q hashtag 24, how can you apply a theme to your ASP.NET application? Answer, there is a configuration file called web.config. Inside the web.config file, you can navigate to the configuration tag and apply the theme as shown below. Configuration system.web pages theme equals your theme name slash slash system.web slash configuration. Q number 25. Does web services support data readers like the POM project? Answer, no it does not. However, it supports data set which can be used to pass input data. Q number 26, what is a web API? Which protocol is used in a web API? Answer, web API can be defined as an interface that facilitates the communication between a client machine and a web server. Let's take a very common scenario of booking a flight on www.makemytrip.com, which is an online travel service that aggregates information from multiple airlines. When you go for a flight booking, you enter information like journey date slash return date, class, etc., and click on search. This will show you the price of multiple airlines and their availability. In this case, the application interacts with the APIs of multiple airlines and gives access to the airline's data. Another example is www.travago.com which compares and lists down the price and availability of different hotels from a particular city. This website communicates with the APIs of multiple hotels to access databases and lists down the prices and availability from their website. HTTP protocols are used in web API. Q number 27, which library is used by the testers and developers to develop automated tests and create testing tools? Answer, Test API is a library, utility, that is used to create automated tests and testing tools using algorithms. Q number 28, what parameters can you pass in the URL of the API? Can get and post use the same URL? Answer, there are a few parameters that you can pass in your URL to define the complete endpoint. These are context keys, document keys, or anything that facilitate the API to hit the exact endpoint. For example, we have to hit the document test on Presto with the use of the context key Kami. Express.presto in such a case, our URL happens to be https colon slash slash www.presto.com but the complete endpoint will look like https slash slash www.presto.com slash com express presto slash test in this way, we can be sure that the endpoint will hit the test document using a specified context key. Yes, get and post will have to use the same endpoint. If you don't use the same endpoint, then it will be like you are creating a record in one URL and retrieving something else from the other URL and this won't make any sense. 
Q number 29, if 200 is for all successful operation then why do we have 201 response codes? Answer, this is a tricky question. As we know, all the HTTP response codes in Web API can be manipulated by the developer and it all depends on the app dev as how they want to configure the response codes. Thus, you can have 200 or 201 for all successful operations. In general, 200 stands for a successful operation and 201 for the successful creation of a record. Q number 30, how can you make sure that Web API returns JSON data only? Answer, in the header portion, you have to pass the value application slash JSON. Q number 31, what is a swagger in Web API? Answer, swagger is the most common template that is used in the Web API. This template is used to check the response of an API for different methods that a particular API supports. You just need to click on the verb, get or put, specify tokens, body or payload, if applicable, and click on try it out. Before implementation, every developer will provide you the swagger link on which you can superficially test the API. If not, the same can be achieved using a tool called Postman. Swagger UI image source queue number 32, explain Swagger components. Answer, as you can see in the above image, there is a URL that ends with slash Swagger UI dot HTML. Every Swagger URL ends with the slash Swagger UI dot HTML. Enlisted below are the various components of Swagger, a, name of the documentation, here API documentation is the name of the documentation. B, name of the API, the product controller is the name of the API which will have an API version and a base URL. C, list of methods that API supports, get, put, post, and delete are the common methods that API supports. Swagger service API image source Swagger sample app image source D, parameters, there are few parameters like ID, context key, name, document name, authorization, content type, etc. that every Swagger supports. E, submit, after you have entered all the required values, you need to click on the try it out button which is the submit button for all Swaggers. Q number 33, what are the media types of HTTP requests and response? Answer, media types are used to specify the formats of the requests, responses, images, and texts. Media types include, image slash PNG or image slash JPG or image slash JPEG text slash HTML application slash JSON or application slash XML Q number 34, what is BSON in Web API? Answer, BSON stands for Binary JavaScript Object Notation. BSON has the objects in the key value pair that is faster for encoding and decoding. It is lightweighted like JSON, but it is much faster than JSON. Moreover, BSON is not in a readable format. Q number 35, write a code snippet to implement the indentation in JSON in Web API. Answer. Below is the code snippet for indentation. var json equals global configuration dot configuration dot formatters dot json formatter json dot serializer settings dot formatting equals formatting dot indented. Conclusion with this, we have come to the end of the tutorial on ASP.NET and Web API interview questions. Thorough knowledge of these ASP.NET and Web API interview questions will help you to crack the interview successfully. We wish you all the best for your ASP.NET and Web API interview.